an incredible start. Slam from home. Oh, my goodness. There's a moment to remember. Oh, big slam. Slams it in. Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to the Road to the Final Four, powered by Pontiac. Tonight, we continue our exclusive live coverage of the 2006 NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Tournament. Eight first-round games remain, and by the end of this evening, we will have trimmed the original tournament field of 65 to 32. Let's set tonight's lineup. Coming up in just a few moments, our early games tipped in Dayton with George Mason taking on Michigan State. In Auburn Hills, Kent State will go against Pittsburgh. Now, many of you will see NC State and California and we'll get our first look at top seeded UConn. Second wave of action will get underway at about 930 Eastern time tonight. Defending national champ North Carolina sees its first action of this year's tournament. Many of you will see UAB clash with Kentucky in an 8-9 matchup. I am delighted who wouldn't be to be joined by my partners Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis of Sports Illustrated. Ready? I'm ready. I think form holds the rest of the evening today in the tournament with the exception of maybe another number 12 seed, Kent State, perhaps being able to take out a very good Pittsburgh team tonight. Well, I kind of like Pitt. I like all the favorites tonight. I've been firing off a lot of upset picks so far today. My Oral Roberts uh, Golden Eagles let me down today, but maybe UAB giving a shot at Kentucky, and I'll be interested to see if Bradley can hang out with Kansas for a while. I think the, the higher-seeded teams tonight win. I was about to say, how are those upset picks working for you? <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so. Action earlier today, a couple of great finishes to some great games. Northwestern State against Iowa. On the call for this game, Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftery. The three, no! Loose ball in the corner. Three seconds to go. Oh, yes! oh my goodness! At the other end, Haluska off the rim. Bucknell, Arkansas, and Craig Bowlerjack and Bob Wenzel. Still needs help. Got it across underneath. Cherry picking. Three. Monica. Oh, it's over. Bucknell. So today's winners and the matchup. Bucknell will meet top seed Memphis, who beat Oral Roberts. Northwestern State advances to play West Virginia. Other winners today included Arizona and Villanova. They will meet in two days, and Ohio State advances to play Georgetown. We have this sad note in the world of college basketball to pass on. Ray Meyer, the legendary coach who coached DePaul for 42 years before retiring in 1984, passed away this afternoon. Meyer coached stars from different eras like George Mikan, Mark Aguirre, and Terry Cummings. And with 724 career victories to his credit, he placed sixth on the all-time list and took teams to the Final Four in 1943 and then three decades later in 1979. Hall of Fame coach Ray Meyer was 92. Mother, Monday on CBS, America's most watched network. When it comes to secure and assured networking, Juniper is your best shot. And your best shot at seeing the hottest action in the NCAA tournament is on CBS, sponsored by Juniper Networks. So look for the Juniper Networks Nothing But Net Shot of the Day, all tournament long. The first round of the 2006 NCAA tournament about to resume around the country. Some of you will begin with George Mason and Michigan State. Others start with Kent State against Pittsburgh. Those expecting to see NC State taking on Cal will take you there for the opening tip at 720 Eastern. And those slated for Albany challenging UConn will bring you there at 725 Eastern time. Enjoy the games, everyone, here on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Cadillac. The United States Army. Bud Light. And by the Principal Financial Group.
25th road to the final four continues tonight from the palace of Auburn Hills in Auburn Hills, Michigan. The Kent State Golden Flashes against the Pittsburgh Panthers first round in the Oakland bracket. And later this evening, fourth seeded Kansas takes on 13 seeded Bradley. Good evening, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Bill Raftery. Bill. Which team has the advantage and why? Well, Pittsburgh's so powerful. They've got great rotations up front. They've got to get Gray involved. Nate Gerwig, on the other hand, has got to play big, stay out of foul problems for Kent State. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. You'll see the uh, Kent State lineup on the left side. Gerwig, Mike Scott, Jay Youngblood, DeAndre Haynes, and Armin Gates, and for Pitt. Aaron Gray, LeBon Kendall, two of the bigs. Antonio Graves gets a start in the backcourt along with Ronald Ramon and Carl Krauser. This game brought to you in HD TV by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television and mobile media. Jamie Dixon in his third year as the head coach at Pitt, and Jim Christian, a former Pitt assistant, is in his fourth year as the head coach at Kent State. Kent State, the champions of the MAC. Pitt out of the Big East, David Hall, John Caldwell, Tom Eads, the officiating crew. We are underway. And Vern Lundquist, Kent State coach. Ramon to Krauser. A Pitt team that was in the Big East final against Syracuse last week. Won their first three games to get there. Here's Antonio Graves. Left side, first shot of the game. Good. Wow, huh? They ran a double screen for a jumper out top. Ends up in Graves' hands. That medium game that we've seen as a lost start. Two bounce and knock it down. DeAndre Haynes, the senior, 6'2", 185, a homecoming for him. He is from Detroit. Here's Youngblood, also from Detroit. And the entry pass. Back outside, jumper taken. Jay Youngblood. Pit. Looks inside for Gray. There's Graves. Into the hands of Antonio Graves. Krauser. And his spacing got jammed up on a kick out pass from Gray. Levon Kendall was being fronted. Now he cuts. Finds the open man. Krauser for two more. How about the presence of mind? Levon Kendall. Nice reverse pivot as he dove to the rim to find his partner. Pitt opens up the 4-0 lead in the first minute and a half. Here's Haynes going right. And Vern Haynes and I think Youngblood have to put it on the deck and ring the bell from deep as well. And on Hugh, Jay, outstanding performer all year long and playing well come stretch time. Jay Youngblood from Southfield High in the Detroit area. Kendall, right side. And look at the help, uh, young boy. They really jam things up, but you better cover. Ramon from outside, cans another. That's for three. Uh, that's the difference in this team, I think. Ramon, Ronald's been able to run the point, put Krauser off the ball, and they both can beat you with the dribble. That really did make a difference when they decided to make the switch and put Krauser at the shooting goal. I think it takes advantage of Krauser's toughness and his ability to get free and also to make big shots. Haynes goes left. There's a jumper taken by Armin Gates. He had a torrid time in the torrid, that is, not horrid, in the MAC tournament. He was 7-11 from outside. Here's Gray underneath. How about the catch? People don't realize with that big body how well he runs. He gets down the floor, Vern. Perfect start for Penn. 4-4. Four four. They lead 9-3. It's an entirely different class of Mercedes-Benz. The R-Class Grand Sports Tourer. More headroom for you. More elbow room for her. More space for him. More luxury. More comfort for them. And them. And them. The R-Class. More of everything to make more people happy. What more could you want? See your local authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer for a special lease offer to Mercedes-Benz Financial. Value unlike any other. Visit your local authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer today. Just sit right back and grab some tails, the tails of some tasty shrimp. Sensations now at Applebee's are really worth the trip. Saute, crisp fried, a fire grill, served on a handy skewer. So many shrimp you'll want to plan a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. 
So join us here this week, my friend. It's time for Eatin' Good. Shrimp Sensations new at Applebee's in your neighborhood. The ability to use tools gives us the power to accomplish things. Hand us one and we'll build something. Show us what's broken and we'll fix it. Give us a challenge and we'll beat it. The right tools in the right hands can hold a family or neighborhood together. It isn't so much the gasoline, electricity, or even sweat. It's the engine that's inside each of us. Briggs & Stratton, the power within. Ten is less than 50. Powerade Option, the low-calorie sports drink. Hi, uh, Enterprise. I'm at the repair shop, and I need to rent a car. At Enterprise, we'll arrange to pick you up free and get you on your way. Nice day, Mom. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. unlike any other, the Masters on CBS. Well, Vern Lundquist, uh, you know, 14 points, 10 rebounds. Watch the big fella get the puppies up and down. He's percolating. No Olympic gold here, but watch the catch, the softness of the hands. Able to let it nestle in and then the presence to deliver. Gerwig could not recover. They didn't help the big fella on Kent State protect against Gray. Had a perfect start for Pitt. Four field goals, three assists on those four. Now the golden flashes. DeAndre Haynes, MAC Player of the Year. First Kent State player to ever be so honored. Here's Gerwig off the mark. Now that's how tall Gray is. He did not even elevate and he influenced. Mike Scott got the loose ball. Here's Haynes with a high pick from. Gerwig, but there's Gray and Kendall again and, inside. And a nice job going underneath by Graves to recover. Now Gerwig just muscles his way. There's not much he can do. No. At the other end, Krauser. Ramon wants it. Back to Krauser. Nice. Kick in the corner. Yes. Wide open look. Nope. Rebound in the hands of Kent State. Jay Youngblood had it. Now Haynes. Now Haynes can get to the rim. Look at the help by Gray. And he just has a presence. Again, he doesn't have to elevate and push hard off the floor. He just reads it, gets himself to the basketball, and you can do some things defensively. You can gamble, and he got the great negator in the back. Aaron Gray, and who would have thought this two years ago, huh? When he checked, checked in, weighing better than 300 pounds, he's lost about 40. Now off the bench, Smith is on Omni Smith, number five, and Warzinski, who had a terrific Mac final in the win over Toledo. And you know what? This is a good move. Rosinski, even though he's posting up now, he can come outside and take Gray away. And the three is good. DeAndre Haynes cans one from long range. And that cuts it to 9 6. Here's Gray coming out with the high screen. Kendall looks inside. Krauser finds it inside. There's the cut and the kick out. Nice ball movement. Antonio Graves, nice pass underneath. Two more. And how about the way he switched to the left hand, Kendall? He cuts well. He's always available. A good cross court action and unselfish play. Levon Kendall out of Vancouver, British Columbia. There's that little shuffle gun. Now, this is what I, I was this he can move him around, Gray. He won't be able to jam things up as much. See? And he can make that shot. Marzinski goes left. Omni Smith almost lost it. Seven on the shot clock. There's the fake. Youngblood. That's the three as well. No. Long rebound, chase down. Omni Smith for three. The lefty can't get it. And a foul underneath. Krauser to Kendall. 4-2. A five-point pit lead. This may be the most important moment of your life. Commit to it. Rolling Stone 
magazine says V for Vendetta is explosive. Violence can be used for good. What are you talking about? Justice. Natalie Portman is dynamite in the movie that will pin you to your seat. Their verdict is vengeance. V for Vendetta. Kill him. Not tonight. Rated R. Now playing in theaters and IMAX. Six Motor Trend Sport Utility of the Year. The new Nissan Xterra. Show us your X. I want to go over a few things before you leave for Oslo. 80 gig, titanium, Wi-Fi, secure. Should you find yourself sans laptop, check in with this. Bluetooth, broadband, built-in camera. Secure. If it's on our network, it's secure. Encrypted, hacker-proof, titanium. It's a pen. Security, powered by Cisco. Five, four, and the crowd goes wild! Let's put your kids' dreams within reach. Lowe's. Let's build something together. Shop today and you could instantly win a VIP trip to the 2007 NCAA Men's Final Four or one of millions of Lowe's prize cards. Flower power. Our retirement specialists can help. Call 1 800 Fidelity. Smart move. CBS Sports Line is your destination for complete tournament coverage. Get bracket updates, video highlights, and expert analysis for each tournament game at CBSSportsLine.com. Ball inbound to Warzinski, the sixth man of the year in the Mid American Conference. Fields and Young are on the floor now for the Pitt Panthers. Here's DeAndre Haynes, Mike Scott. Back it goes to Youngblood. Sam Young is out defending him on the perimeter. Orzinski battles inside. Youngblood in the corner. Nice penetration. Oh, beautiful. Their perimeter players are terrific at putting it down, getting to the 10, and very clever with the dribble as well. And Warzynski being played down low, he can do some damage because Kendall's on him now. Not great. Omni Smith picks up Levance Fields. And at the point, there's a steal by Kent State. DeAndre Haynes rejected cleanly by Levon Kendall. What a reaction. Levance Fields got away with a carry. Bowser couldn't take the hit and finish that trip. At the other end, Kent State forcing the issue. Here's DeAndre Haynes. Now too deep. Take a look at LeBron Kendall's block. I thought it was clean. Uh, it was gorgeous. I think on the way up, no question about it. You can use that glass as well as long as it's on the way up. Now, this is a guy that burst on the scene in South America with 40 points against the USA team down there in the summer games and all of a sudden he's one of those big players that Pitt develops by that they do everything well mm -hmm. you know it's, it's they jump out at you whether it's defense shot blocking you've seen him dive and pass and he can score as well Kevin Warzynski gets one of two at the line and it's a two-point game 11 to 9 now Fields comes right there's the trap Omni Smith and DeAndre Haynes Pretty good foot speed, don't they, in that half-court trap? Strictly man. Fields and Graves. Now here's Sam Young, number 23. Graves, quick foul call. And 
mentioned Young. He's a guy that can really do some damage. Greg Dumble in New York. While we keep track of Kent State and Pittsburgh for you, it's time for you to join Washington, D.C. regional play in Philadelphia. Albany's Great Danes against top seed UConn in the Washington region. Let's go to Philly and join Jim Nance and Billy Packer. The last of the number one seeds to play. The Yukon Huskies about to take on the Albany Great Danes here in Philadelphia. First game of a nighttime doubleheader here at the Wachovia Center with Kentucky and UAB coming up later. Hello, friends. Jim Nance and Billy Packer and the uh, one seeds now 87 and 0 all time. But at practice yesterday, Albany showed up with T-shirts that said, why not us? Well, someday, somewhere, but Jim, it's not going to happen again tonight. Yeah, okay. I won't give into that. Well, let's uh, look at some of the players to watch, and we begin with Rudy Gay of the Huskies. Well, one of the most gifted players in college basketball. Will this be a tournament? And he starts to show exactly what he can do. Jamar Wilson, Conference Player of the Year, an explosive guard, big city kid. I'm sure he's liking this challenge. They do have a big kid on the Albany side. Kirsten Zillner, 7-1 senior from Germany, matched up against the Big East Defensive Player of the Year, Hilton Armstrong at 6-11. And this game brought to you in HDTV by Harris Corporation, world leader in broadcast systems for high-definition television and mobile media. The officials, Richard Cartmel, Antonio Petty, Robert Staffan, John Cal, the alternate, as we get set to begin things in the nighttime session in Philly. It's not often that Rudy Gay looks at the man he's jumping against in the throat. Yes. <laughs> That's how much bigger Zalmer is. Gay gets the tap. And Albany in its first ever NCAA Division I tournament. And Marcus Williams, top assist man in the Big East. Some say he might be the best point guard. Pure point guard in the country. Over to Gay, here inside to go. Boom, we'll kick it back out, no reset. Now you can see what they're having. Jamar Wilson play off of Williams, giving him the jump shot. Trying to get it in low and taken away by the great Danes and Brent Wilson. Now a straight man-to-man -man matchup is exactly what Albany will play. No funky zone, no mix and match defense they're going after a man to man nice cut tough shot bounced around to gay and UConn's already going to bring in a sub it's going to be Jeff Adrian coming right in after the Huskies first trip down the floor Jim Calhoun said I'm bringing Boone to the bench to have a word with him I'll tell you what he is quick pulling that Josh Boone out of ball games Brian Lillis all for the foul for Albany This Albany team at 21 and 10. They've got a lot of size, Jim. When he puts Zollner down there in the middle, Brent Wilson, pretty good sized player. This is a tough matchup for Lewis right here. Rudy Gay hits the jumper to open up the story. Yeah, he's got size on him and quickness. Lewis from Iowa. And obviously has some pretty good genes in his family, his sister. One of the great players in Iowa basketball history at the university. Here's Wilson. And that one spins around and out, and Armstrong clears it for UConn. Oh, what a lot of pass. He's so good at that on the go. Wilson in there and the others, and they help force the turnover. There's Will Brown, the 34-year-old head coach of Albany. They won the America East title, Billy, and they won the conference tournament automatic bid by beating Vermont in the conference final, tournament final. Well, he's impressed me what he's done at Albany, and what he did at Sullivan C County Community College was even more impressive in terms of national junior college reputation. An awesome record. But this is the first appearance Albany's ever had in an NCAA tournament. It's amazing what this school has done going to Division I and being this good, this quickly. Going through the whole process, it comes out of the conference that made it to the Sweet 16 last year with Vermont. Javon Wilson on the go, missing the shot. He's had a couple of looks. You notice Josh Boone's right back in there. Jim Calhoun just wanted to make a statement to him. And it's off his leg, back to Albany. He's frustrated. 
Nice job by Rudy Gay to say, come on, Josh, get in this ball game with us. Jim Calhoun's first game as a coach in the tournament as a Hall of Famer. Went in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I'm glad you finished that sentence. I was wondering where well, you were going. We were ready to pounce, but he went in in September. It was announced on the Monday of the championship game last year in St. Louis, of course. Uh, he has 30 games of the season to go through at 27 to 3. The first tournament game is a Hall of Famer. NCAA tournament game. They were ousted in the quarterfinals of the Big East tournament a week ago in New York, Syracuse, by Syracuse. That pass with the shot uh, taken into the first row by Rudy Gay as Lucius Jordan tried to challenge. I tell you, this may be one versus 16, but Jim Calhoun is pacing the sidelines like I haven't seen him pace in a long time. He is really into this ball game. Lillis puts it in just in time. Ooh, what a shot. Well, two on the shot clock. Got a piece of the Ravens owner. Out to Jordan with a three. Yes, there you go. 3-2 Albany. There's that hit ahead pass again by Williams. That basket, Billy, creates our first lead change of the day in Philadelphia. After we had two wire-to-wire -wire winners in the afternoon, Arizona and Villanova. Dinner Brown with a three. And it's been playing so well. A terrific block out by Lucius Jordan. Underneath, Jordan, yes. Made the play by using the rim to shield off the defender. This team is not intimidated, just like in the first game. Monmouth did a terrific job against Villanova. A double down on Josh Boone's got to leave somebody open. UConn's turned it over three of its five trips. Inside, Boone fouled by Zoller. They've got to be careful with Zoller now if you're Albany. Well, Williams is making some crazy passes this early in the ball game, Jim, trying to thread needles. And very similar to what Villanova did. The ones in the 16s always try to go for knockouts right away. And if it doesn't work, it becomes a frustrating game because they get out of sync. All that foul, Billy, not on Zollner, but Brent Wilson. Boone hits the first. Of course, Boone with all that NCAA tournament pedigree. Started as a freshman on that championship team that won the title over Georgia Tech and San Antonio, 0-4. One of two. Mark Wilson, he is quick. He is quick. Not afraid to take it in traffic. Brent Wilson lost it, but Zoller for the second time keeps the possession alive. Brent Wilson off the mark. Lillis crashing inside, up and good. This team's pretty tough. Got some hard-nosed kids. And they got a steal. These passes, Jim, are knockout throws, and they are not the way Connecticut ought to be playing early in this ball game. Jim Calhoun has to be beside himself. It's a pretty good team. You need to play a solid ball game to start. And you can obviously see that Albany is not intimidated. Wilson puts it up left hand, and it's 9-3. Great Danes. They got some size, they got some speed. They got a whole lot of energy and another turnover coming up. You, if you're Jim Calhoun, you don't want to wait maybe here for the TV timeout. Well, he's going to get the TV timeout. Yeah, he's going to go with Anderson, too. Why not us? That's what Albany said. Coming in, the lead 9-3 at the first break. The true fan, the whole year comes down to just one weekend. The 2006 NCAA Men's Final Four. In the biggest ticket giveaway in NCAA history, only Pontiac is sending 100 fans to see it live. You have four days left to get to your Pontiac dealer. Get your ID number. Log it in at NCAAsports.com slash Pontiac and see if these seats will be yours when the Final Four comes down to just one. Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. Introducing Papa's new Perfect Pan Meats Pizza. Yeah, we got it. Our golden pan crust, deep and square, piled with pepperoni, sausage, ham, and bacon. With a zesty new Robusto sauce, try a large Perfect Pan Meats Pizza for just $12.99. $12.99. Call now or order at PapaJohns.com and we'll deliver. Better ingredients, better pizza, and now a better pan. Papa John's. Yeah, we got it. 
Anything in play we should be looking at? One stock I'm seeing some early interest in is B E N G trading at 16, 18, 19 percent retracement from a recent high of 20. Looks like we've just completed the second leg of a bullish ABC up pattern. Only Power E Trade Pro gives you upgraded charting, trailing stops, and bracketed orders, all for $6.99 to $9.99 per trade, so you can be ahead of the curve. That's the way I see it. Back to you. <coughs> when you get a cold, <coughs> you can't always slow down. But you can feel better, faster, with NyQuil each night and DayQuil each day. Together, they'll give you the relief you need to keep going. So leave the coughing, aching, and fever behind with NyQuil each night and DayQuil each day. Feel better, faster. Since you haven't had an accident for over three years, I got you a great discount. <laughs> Okay. And I even got you a discount for having your airbags. Booyah! And because you have your renter's insurance with us, you save even more. Now you're covered, so to speak. Oh, baby, yeah, Buy me, buy me. Oh! Oh! We good. Join our 40 million fans good. as State Farm salutes NCAA March Madness. Call an agent today. Our Southwest Airlines sideline report as you see Will Brown and his great names on a 9-1 run after Rudy Gay hit the game's first basket, 9-1 since. And what did you see over in the UConn huddle during the break? I saw Jim Calhoun very upset with his team. You've got Marcus Williams as he went over to the sideline before he ever sat down and said, hey, you can tell, get under control. They're trying to go for home run passes on every toss. Jeff Adrian is in for the Huskies number four. There he is defending. And Rashawn Anderson now defending on the ball with sharpshooter. Best sixth man in the country, number 31. I think Wilson can take him a little bit off the dribble. Almost walked on that play, not called. Very patient. Well, they've got under eight on the shot clock. Back out to Brent Wilson. He's got an open three feet plan it short. And Marcus Williams will run it up the floor. Inside the boom. Soft hook for two. A good job by Zalman not to foul on that play. Driving in, Jamar Wilson and Zoner wisely backing off the tap. I think Anderson will have all kinds of problems with Wilson. He's got some yeah, quickness, he has some doesn't he? And he dribbles low to the floor. A city player. Gay driving, dishing, stolen. Jamar Wilson. Uh, you see, he was going to try to get Gay to run over the top of him, pick up the cheap foul. Well, they're playing behind Zoner, giving him a chance to touch the ball anytime he wants. Short with the shot over Boone. UConn ready to bring in Denim Brown and Greg Austry. And uh, Zarner's asking to come out. He's a little tired. Another steal. Can you believe how many times they've stolen it already? That's seven steals. It is. And, and Jim, the reason for it is Marcus Williams made this game very uncomfortable in style is the way that Connecticut's playing normally. He's under control. He's been out of control so far in this game. Jordan Jumper tipped around the game. And it's Adrian on the dunk. A little bit too easy is the way Albany's been playing their defense. Dribbling, gives it up, Zoller jumper. Well, Zoller's tired, Jim, and when you are, you take a shot. But you don't want to put out. But he makes a steal, another one. He got back down on the floor. Timeout call by Albany, they see it. Tell you, they're gonna bring in two subs after the break. Including Levi Levine, right there with the headband. He took off his warm-up, did not have his jersey on underneath. Had to go to the locker room to put it on. <laughs> 
Billy, you were saying Zolna needed a breather. I looked over and jumping off the bench was this young man, Levi Levine, senior from New York, New York. And when he took his warm-up top off, there was nothing but a T-shirt on underneath. He did not have the jersey. The whole bench began to laugh and off he ran under the tunnel back to the locker room. So uh, back in the days when guys used to wear those long warm-up pants, I know many a man. Oh, don't tell. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Also brought in Jimmy Covington, 54, out there setting some picks. Yachty in for the first time, almost hits the three. And the boxing out leads to an offensive rebound. Here's Levine with the three. And Denim Brown's first action over to Austria, who also checks in for the first time. Denim Brown has really been playing some outstanding basketball for Connecticut down this stretch. Good pass, good luck. So the Huskies back within two. This is uh, John Yachty, 14, with the ball. Sophomore from York, Pennsylvania. He could pop it from the outside. He had six threes in a game at Pauley Pavilion early in the season. Austrian Williams. Now there's a switch. Levine puts it up and out to Boone. With the ball, freshman who started the first 11 games of the year as Marcus Williams was suspended for the first third of the season. Austria settling this team down with it, getting into their half court offense much better with it on the floor. Here's Austria on the drive looking for the tying basket, and UConn has come back to tie it as Albany's missed its last six shots. The great Danes. That surprised everyone here with a lead at one time of nine to three. I'm surprised Jim Calhoun's gonna take Austria out of the ball game. He's got Williams right back up there now. Anderson almost steals it. Jamar Wilson, no challenge. Anderson then kick it to the corner. Levine stepping in the paint. Jordan, he's hit one of these, a three, no. Last touch by Albany. So we're almost halfway through the first half. 16 and a one, tied at 11. Jim, look at this right here. Eight turnovers to zero. And what that is caused by is the fact that Connecticut going for the knockout punch early. Williams trying to make the spectacular tough plays instead of playing solid and Albany took advantage of it. Albany with 19 field goal tries, which is only six for UConn because they're either turning it over or making, and that hit the back of the glass. They say it was touched by an Albany player on the way up, so it'll stay with the Huskies. Albany about a four and a half hour drive away. Of course, the capital city of New York. And again, their first ever appearance in the NCAAs. Rudy Gay with the offensive rebound. Yachty thought he had knocked it off Gay, but they'll say again, the great Danes the last to touch it. Gay was going to catch that ball and wheel right back into the basket. He had a good idea. Didn't quite have a hold of it. It's a zone out of bounds situation. Soft hook. Boone, no. Yes. But don't give up on it too soon. And Boone, who got pulled after the first trip down the floor, had a little exchange there with the coach uh, just a little coaching on the side he's got seven now he's come out hot zona underneath Big and an easy strong. basket power move there against the best shot blocking team in the country that had two, two of their three big men in position to block that shot Jordan armstrong looking around and other steal. This, this Jamar Wilson's got quick hands and feet. And outside, he was pushed by Rudy Gay. Albany, a school with, well, about 12,000 undergrads, founded in 1844 with the uh, graduate program. There's 17,000 enrollment. Found us. Albany Normal College in 1844. That pass deflected by Dan oh. Brown. But there's Brent Wilson picking up the loose change. Who do you want to give that assistant to? Jamar Wilson will get it. But Connecticut touched it right before the layup. Brother coach Will Brown 
He told us yesterday, Billy, this is going to be the first game all year where we're going to play loose as Boone in the paint. Picked up by Brent Wilson. He lost it going back the other way to UConn. If we won't be in awe of UConn, he assured us. You see Greg Clark said with the singular at the half and the singular Naismith update. Live look, it's coming up singular at the half. Well, this Albany team has faced eight ranked teams. This year they played UCLA to a nice ball game out on the West Coast. Obviously, none of those games are played at home, although they have played four of those against Syracuse. One did go to Albany. That's a three. Three by Marcus Williams. Yeah, they went out there and played it, Paul. They played them to a six-point game. They also played Florida early in the year before Florida was ranked. So uh, they've taken on some tough teams. The three by Marcus Williams gives UConn the lead. And they lost three overtime games this year. The record would be even better. Sigurds in the game for the first time. And last touched by the Great Danes. They turn it over for the first time. Well, this. And, and this is, again, Will Brown, 34 years old, in his fifth year as the head coach. His biggest concern, he felt more in this game, is could we stay with him, he said, rebounding. Well, so far, because of the knockout blows that Connecticut are trying to do with passes that have been tough inside, rebounding hasn't been an issue. Dennis Brown hits the jumper for the Huskies, up three. Denon Brown could be the difference maker. Just as we all know Anderson is coming off the bench, Denon Brown is a solid that has been so solid. I'll tell you, Denon Brown, though, Billy, the last four games of the season, including that Syracuse game in the Big East tournament, has averaged about 20 a game. Under eight to go, first half, Huskies by three. Go to mycoperewards.com slash NCAA to play Coca-Cola NCAA Championship on 2006. They're going to be Zollner going to the foul line. I watched him yesterday. Looked like he had a fairly good stroke, but he's only shooting 46% from the foul line. As a team, Albany's shooting almost 71%, so when you've got a man that's going to the line over 100 times down there below 50, you can see how well the other guys are doing. UConn with its ninth player now to enter the game, Ed Nelson, number 32. Is in for the Huskies and Zolner at the line for a pair. That is a good looking stroke. It is. I watched him yesterday in practice, and it was a fine stroke to be way down there. And there's uh, Ed Nelson, who began his college career at Georgia Tech and had a fine freshman go of it, but transferred to UConn. Had to sit out the championship year as a transfer. And at times this year, spot duty, he's given them some big minutes. He was the ACC freshman of the year. That's something. That's amazing, isn't it? Another big body in there for the Huskies. Rudy Gay fade away. Beautiful step back <laughs> jumper right over Ziggy. It's the highest arcing jumper in college basketball. It comes down wet. Well, Ziggy's six foot four, if that. No problem for Rudy Gay to shoot right over the top of him. Play by Denham Brown. And Jordan able to break up the fast break. He deflected that. Oh, absolutely. The officials missed that. Oh, they, they're going to give it to Albany. And uh, another turnover in the books. It should have been one, but UConn committed the first eight turnovers of the game. Now they're up to 10. I'll tell you, Jim Calhoun tonight is trigger on mistakes that are made by players. That's going to put Williams right down, but that was that ball was tipped. Pick and roll, same play they ran before. And he could deliver. And Zellner dunks it down for a one-point UConn lead now. And as I said, Jim Calhoun checking guys quickly. You know he's going to come out on that play. Josh Boone. He fell asleep. Set play. Nelson has walked twice on his play, and it's the shot. <laughs> well, they owed him he one after that run. last one wasn't a turnover. He was moving his feet looking for somebody to pass to and finally being wide open takes the jumper. Ben Wilson. He tried to shoot the Rudy Gabe fall away jumper. This is Lucius Jordan who had the first five of the game for the Great Danes. Hanging in here very nice. 
nicely in this ball game. Hard to get that over Josh Boone, but does it anyway. And it last touched Boone. Coming in, Hilton Armstrong, starting center. They call him just strong around UConn. You know, one of the things that uh, you can't take away from this UConn team, we all knew what a great defender Emeka Okafor was, but five years in a row they've led the nation in shot blocking. It's amazing, great aspect, and allows them to be much more aggressive. This is not backcourt. Allows them to be much more aggressive out on the perimeter because they know if somebody penetrates, they're going to be shot blockers back there waiting for them. Four straight years they've produced the Big East Defender of the Year. Two years it was Okafor, then last year Boone, this year Armstrong. Jordan with the three that ties the game. That's his second from that distance. With 540 to go in the first half. The Great Danes. Ooh, I thought Armstrong was going to take a jump for himself. This has been outstanding man-to-man -man defense by Auburn. Trying to become the greatest dog in the history of the tournament to win a game. The 16th never beaten a one. Dinner Brown. And he banks home with three of his own. He is really playing good basketball. Yeah, what? I mean, this he, last month he's been something else. You know what he's playing like? He's playing like he used he's played for Canada yeah. international ball, where he's one of the top international players. Wilson, nice square up there. Two-point basket. Well, he had Nelson out beyond the area where Nelson normally defends. Well, you keep wondering, is it going to be that big spurt, that big stretch by the Huskies, the big guys, and here's a foul called against Siggers well, one of, of Albany. Things, Jim, one of the things that I, I don't think that Connecticut will wear this team down, they've got about eight or nine deep, does Albany, and, uh, and pretty good athletically. We were profiling Albany a little bit earlier. Perhaps in athletics, that one of the things is Jeff Boone comes back, they've been best known for. They host the New York Giants football training camp every summer. That's where the Giants train. And they take that gym, that floor, where Albany plays its home games, is Rashad Anderson. This is his first try of the game. And they use the floor and the surrounding areas as the Giants' locker room at training camp. And some of these players get an opportunity to apprentice there. Yep, like, like uh, Jamar Wilson. So the Huskies being pushed, even though they're shooting 73%. And this is going to be a foul against Albany and Lucius Jordan. Jordan was right, first. He was right down there on Brown, but uh, reached in. Story here. UConn hitting shots when it doesn't turn it over. 10 turnovers, but shooting 79%, leading by only one. Coming back in, the starter, Brian Lillis at the off guard. Uh, Jim, you know, when you, when you give it up 10 times, 10 possessions, you know, there's a situation, even if you're shooting 50%, there's 10 points. Well, there's 10. Anderson. And Williams saves it. But not really. Into the arms of Jamal Wilson. Tries to scoop it, but Armstrong got a piece of the hand. Well, the winner of this game takes on the winner of Kentucky UAB on this floor in Philadelphia on Sunday. Armstrong's first foul in Jamal Wilson. The young man from the Bronx, you can tell he's played a lot of city basketball. You know, he took he just created a shot on that move. Shooting 84% from the foul line. Ties the game with that one. One more. 17-7 points per game. Just an outstanding player, and as we said, the conference player of the year. Levi Levine back in. Brent Wilson sits. And Jamar Wilson, as you said, Billy, conference player of the year out of the America East. Something that Taylor Coppenrath had been laying claim to in recent years. Levine has had his biggest games against Big East team Syracuse. He's had 12 points, five rebounds, five steals one time, 15 points, eight rebounds, and six steals another. So Big East fair is not something bothersome. Great Danes are back in front. See, it? it's a little zone action right now. 2 3 zone. They took Jamar back Wilson. Wilson out. They bring Yachty back in. Here he is, 14, the top of that zone. It's a matchup 2 3 zone. They have not played zone all year until today. And the shot chased down by Yachty. They had to learn it this week. 
Boy, Lillis hit the floor and went sliding, but he's fine. Back up. Gay's kind of laughing because it was a slight trip. You know, that maneuver where they set the back screen for Zion around the roll, I wonder when they're going to do that again because he's open twice. That's double dribble. Got two hands on it, Lillis. However, as we go to the break, that's right. It's Albany in front. Zoller doing it up on the inside. Jim, two that really surprised you. The Pac-10 3-0 and leading could be 4-0 and after the first day, huh? Well, the Big East was 0-3 day one, but three wins late this afternoon, and now UConn in action. As we've got the Big East against the America East here, and the America East champion Albany Great Danes not only hanging with him, but leading. There's that 2 3 zone. That, that was the first time that something happened easy. And I think that we're going to see the zone go away. Boone gives UConn the lead back. Josh Boone with a little soft hook has given UConn the lead by one with under three minutes to go in the half. Husky shooting over 80%, but have turned it over 10 times. Here's a turnover by Albany. Two on one. Denim Brown goes driving through, and it's a block call against Albany. It sure looked like the defender had the position there. Well, I think that the pass could have been made here to Boone on the other side. He really never established a defensive position, Jim. Yeah, when you see yep. the second, look at it. I agree. Brent Wilson now with two, and Denim Brown to the line. If you establish the position, then you can be moving your feet, but he never really had one. But I thought that Denim Brown should have thrown that ball up in the air to Boone, who was coming down on the break on the other side. So Brown again giving them a boost off the bench. <laughs> Or actually starting and then replaced early. You know, you think about Denim Brown as you see Jamar Wilson coming back in. Denim Brown and Rashad Anderson really kind of play the same position. You know, they well, the two of them are so similar. They can both and, and Anderson yeah. comes off the bench. And you know, they can do that when they play them both at the same time. You've got your wings manned by two guys that just can light it up from the outside. He's an 85% free throw shooter. And now he's really playing some good defense as well. Had to turn that corner so quickly. Tie up as Denim Brown reaches in. Jump ball arrow goes to Albany. That's a tough break for Wilson there. He turned the corner and had the corner made, but he just slipped. Feet came out from underneath him. He's faked himself out a couple of times in this first half. And he just keeps going. He's just always jumping, very jumpy. He's not taking any lip from Denim Brown either. You know, to put in perspective, this club was in the Elite Eight of Division Three in 1994. They had to go through all the processes from Division Three, Division Two, NAIA in their past as well. Division One in 2000, so quite a leap. Lewis, good move. Oh, right spin, shot. too. Very tough shot. One point game for UConn. Pass over the top. Boom. Lost it for a moment. Might have been three seconds, not called. Talk about Albany, they had a coach there for some 40 years, Richard Doc Sowers, with over 700 wins. He's now the women's golf coach. That's a retired. Nice retire. Yeah, but now the retired legendary coach. He was there when they first started the transition up the ladder to Division I before retiring in 96. Right, he was in Division Three, Division Two, NAIA. So he uh, went through the whole circuit there. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Minute 37 and a half. Toss it out high and it's stripped away from Armstrong. Albany can take the lead with a minute 30 to go and a half. Oh, how did that go in? He threw the pass and it was tapped. Somehow off the glass and in by Zelda. Zelda just got a hand on it and the English and the spin was perfect. And everyone on their feet, and Kentucky fans, UAB fans in the arena cheering it on as well. Back comes Marcus Williams, and UConn regains the lead by one. Wanting to spread things out. 
Utilize as much of the clock as possible. You know Jamar, Jamar Wilson's going to have the ball in his hands. Will Brown hollering instructions to his point guard, who waits until 14 seconds on the shot clock. Now driving and spinning. Look with the left hand, tipped around out to Marcus Williams. And he's got an opportunity now to wait on Josh Boone, get the last shot. Jim Calhoun wants a timeout. And it is given, granted, to the Huskies who are in for a fight tonight. A little Friday night fight in Philadelphia. A one seed and a mighty underdog. A great Dane, in fact. And UConn leads it by one. UConn called the timeout. Huskies can hold it for the last shot. Now, Jim, Albany was much better off in their man-to-man -man than they have been in the zone. Let's see if Coach will go ahead and take a chance. Coach Brown right now will take a chance and go back to the man-to-man. -man. Looks like he's setting up for the 2-3 zone again with a little matchup. And as he told us yesterday, we just don't play zone. Maybe he was trying to fake us out a little bit, too. So they hadn't played it all That's year. Right. Had to put it in this week. It's the only way he said we could stay with him. They did not want to get their big man Zomer in any kind of early foul trouble. Yeah, they showed the zone now as the clock is winding down. They went back to man to man. In fact, Zomer with no personal fouls in this half. Eight seconds to go before the intermission. Williams, Jordan defending. Boom, looking for baseline. Zomer blocks. UConn leaves, but it's nothing easy about it. The one seed leads by one. CBS Sports exclusive coverage continues after this word. And a message from your local station. Our 25th year on the road to the Final Four. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular.